All right. So this was chapter six, number four. So we're looking at uh, a reaction requires 2.875 times 10 to the 25th molecules of acetic acid. So you guys don't know what this chemical formula is because we haven't talked about the nomenclature for acids, but this is the chemical formula for that guy. The solution density is 1.049 grams per milliliter. And we want to know how many milliliters are required for the reaction. Okay. All right, so first things first, we wanna figure out where we're trying to go, right? So what unit are we trying to end up with? Milliliters. Milliliters, exactly, yeah. So we're trying to get to milliliters, right? And the information that we're starting with, we have 2.875 times 10 to the 25th molecules of this guy, right? I'm gonna have to not use this pen for future videos, huh? That's not great. It's not the worst pen. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it's not bright yellow. <laughs> cool. All right, so that's one of the pieces of information we have, and the other one is the density, right? Which is grams of Oops, beep boop. This guy per milliliter of solution. Okay. So Seeing that I have molecules to start, right? I'm starting off at the far end of the molar coaster, right? So Right, so I'm starting off here, right? And I wanna go this way. Does it make sense why? Yeah. What's my motivation for getting to grams here? You wanna eventually get to milliliter, right? Exactly, the last box says molecules. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go from grams to, to eventually to milliliters. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to get from molecules to grams, and from grams, I can get milliliters by itself, right? So that's my motivation here. So my first conversion is going to be going from molecules to moles, right? 
So what piece of information do I need to make that jump? Um, yeah, Avocado's number, right? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per one mole. So now I'm here, right? What piece of information do I need to go here? The atomic weight. The molar mass, right? The yeah. molar mass. No, that's great. So we have our chemical formula here, right? Mm -hmm. The molar mass is going to be four times the molar mass of hydrogen, two times carbon and two times oxygen. Yeah. Now I apologize, I kind of went off the page here, but I'm just gonna start over here. So what unit needs to go on the bottom here? Moles. Moles. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I don't have the answer yet. That's okay. That's okay. And grams will go up top, right, guys? I got 60.052. I got 60.048. Eh, close enough. Okay. Cool. So that's going to go on the bottom. Oh, I got 0 0.052. Oh, gotcha. Meow. Sorry. <laughs> this page is so ugly. I'm sorry, you guys. I promise I can do better. All right, so I've canceled out moles, right? So now, what's my next step? What unit do I want on the bottom? Um, so, Go ahead, I have Jessica. a question because this is where I got thrown off because yeah. I thought after this we were done. Nuh-uh. We're not done. No, because so we're trying to get to... To utilize that piece of density. Oh, because milliliters. Yeah. Right, so this is, remember when we were talking about dimensional analysis earlier in the semester, and we said, if you don't know where you're going, you won't get there, right? So this is that, this is that same idea, right? And, and I know it sounds kind of stupid, but I legit write it down at the beginning of problem solving because I will forget, right? Okay. I will forget where I'm trying to go, and I'll be like, oh, I made it to the other side of the roller coaster, donezo! Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. but, but that's not the unit we're trying to end in, right? So if we're trying to end in milliliters, mm -hmm. right, then we need to cancel out grams, right? So what piece of information do we have to cancel out grams? The density. The density, exactly, right? So we have 1.049 grams of this guy per one milliliter. This guy cancels with this guy. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this on the next page because this is horrifying to look at.
So I know you guys are plugging this in your calculator, but just while you're doing that, um, I just want to point out again, one of the things that I think uh, students struggle with is putting the scientific notation in their calculator, right? It's really easy to get rid of that sino right now, right? If I have 23 on the bottom and 25 on top, right? I take 25 and I subtract 23, right? And that gives me 10 to the 2 up here. Yeah, because when I first did this and plugged it into my calculator, it said it was like 10 to the 49th. And I was yeah. like, that's, that's not right. That's probably going to be a parentheses situation mm -hmm. because if you don't have parentheses wrapped around the bottom, then it's going to divide by one and multiply by another. Yeah. But, but that's, again, one of those steps where if you see you get to the 49th power, that's the first indication that you know you did something wrong, right? Because these numbers clearly cancel. Do we have to write, uh, could we just plug in the two at the end rather than putting in, putting it in the cap our calculator? You mean, instead of putting this number into scientific notation, could you just multiply mm -hmm. by 100? Um, no, can we just um, divide 2.8775 by 6.022? And then at the end of the, when we get our final answer, uh, just plug in the time 10 to 2. I see what you're saying. So can you multiply these two and then divide by the um, the qu quotient? Is that the word? <laughs> Whatever this, this, this thing on the bottom it equals, right? Uh, and then multiply by 10 to the 2? Sure, you could do that. Uh, the way that I would probably do this is just say... Like this. Oops, sorry. You guys picking up what I'm laying down there? So I just took it out of Sino, because at that point, you, it's not really helping me. Mm. But yeah, you could totally stick the 10 to the 2 on the end. Absolutely. Steph, you good? You're good? We're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you heart attacking about what we're doing? In, huh? I got, I got like 20, well, 2,733.059494. Like, I got something crazy. Are you sure it's crazy? I mean, we basically have 200. Uh -huh. We divide 6 into 60. What does that give us? Oh, I think I'm right. Yeah, so this is basically, right? You guys okay. see what I mean okay. about... Exactly. Yeah, with the, um, whatever they calculated. Yeah, so what'd you guys... I got 2.733. Okay, so I left it in scientific notation or whatever. Like, I left... But I also got times 10 to the 4th, so... Mm. I don't like that. Never... Okay. Let me do it without the 10 of the 2 in it. <laughs> I need to trust my calculator. Like, that's the thing. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Absolutely not, Steph. You do not want to trust your calculator. You want to trust your brain. Right? So, it's not about trusting your calculator, it's about being able to look at this. And say, oh, if I just divide this guy by, or this guy by basically six, right? That gives me 10. Now this is math I can do in my head, right? So if I know that this thing should be approximately 2,800 something, um, right? So I did it again and I got 2866.1757. Beautiful. Does that sound more correct? I don't know how I got this. Yeah, except I just got 2867 or whatever. Like it came up one time. Six, seven? Like this? Yeah. No, they rounded it for you. Same Z's. Well, you have a fancy calculator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is from the bookstore. 
There's it's the no same, thing. right? If we were yeah. off by by that number, no big deal. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? So, um, just to restate, since it's been a little while since we've done this dimensional analysis stuff, one of the most important things that I recommend for you guys when you're going through and doing these types of problems is try and eliminate as many of the powers of 10 beforehand as you can, right? I mean, you don't have to go crazy with it, but some of them are just easy to, to, to get rid of, right? And if that's the case, then, you know, simplify it so that you don't end up getting wacky stuff in your calculator. Questions? Does that help, um, Zainab? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's better. No, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I would say that that's probably a more complicated version of this problem than you would see on this exam, right? So that's kind of preparing you in the homework for where we're going to be going with this when we start doing stoichiometry of solutions, but um, we're, we're not really there yet. Does that make sense? So, yeah. so if this one caught you off guard, that's okay. We're, we're working our way up to um, later yes. chapters. Cool. Uh, so